In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a disappearing data series in a chart in Crystal Excelsius. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean basically you have a data series that you can toggle on or off. For example, I've got this particular combination chart that has 2004 as a line, and if I click on this button, it either appears or disappears. And this is quite easy to do. And let me show you how. Now, believe it or not, this trick actually starts off with the Excel model. What I've got here is a raw table. This is a table with hard-coded numbers, but I'm not going to link this table to the combination chart. What I'm going to do is actually create a new data table here uh, using nothing but formulas. So I'll start off with typing in 2005, and this line here is going to be the 2005 series for my chart. Now, instead of typing in the hard-coded numbers, I'm actually going to reference the hard-coded numbers in my raw table. So for every month, I'm going to reference its respective link here in 2005. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste this across. So now you'll see that each number here in this 2005 series matches the 2005 series in the raw table. Now for the 2004 series, we're going to do something different. We're not going to simply reference the appropriate data series here in the raw table. What we'll use is an if statement. And the if statement is going to go like this. Equals if A1 equals 1, then we're going to reference the cell. Else, we're going to leave a blank, and leaving a blank can be represented by two quotes. And then close it out, and hit enter. So now you'll notice that it is blank. Now, cell A1, if I put a 1 in there and hit enter, it turns out to show something. Now, what's so special about cell A1? Absolutely nothing. This is just the cell I chose. This is going to be what's called our trigger cell. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that purple just to give it some special attention. And what I'll do here is copy this across. But before I do that, I want to make sure that cell A1 has an absolute reference assigned to it by these dollar signs here. That makes sure that no matter how I copy it across, cell A1 is always referenced. And then just copy it across. And now you'll see that 2004 is populated with the data that's in the raw table. Now, if I turn this to a 0, it disappears. If I turn it to a 1, it appears. Remember that. If there's a 1 in cell A1, it appears. If there's not a 1, it disappears. Now that this is working the way we want it to, let's go ahead and do a couple things here. I'm going to go ahead and say January up here, just to give this some headers. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this with a 1 in it. Now, what, why am I going to save this with a 1 in cell A1? Well, because when my model loads, I want the 2004 series to be visible. I don't want it to start off as this, nothing there. I want it to start off with a 1 in it. So I'm going to go ahead and save it with a 1 in there. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. So now my Excel model is saved. I'm ready to start building in Crystal Excelsius. So I have a blank canvas here. I'm going to go ahead and import that model that I saved. And once the model is imported, I'm going to uh, bring in combination chart. Double click on the chart combination chart to get to the properties window. And then I'm going to select the data range cell reference icon. Now, when the file opens, you'll notice that I've got two data sets that I can choose from. I'm not going to link to the raw data. Again, I've created this particular data table with formulas in it, so I'll link to that. And you'll notice that, again, cell A1 does have a 1 in it, so 2004 series is indeed visible. Once I link to the correct data source, I'll press OK. So here's my chart. And again, 2004 is visible. <laughs> So the question is, how do I make this particular 2004 data series not visible? Well, you can do that with the toggle button selector. The toggle button selector is a component that can be found under the selectors category. And I'll just plop it right here so we can see it. And it's basically an on-off switch. It either is on or is off. So you can double click on it to bring up the properties. And you'll see a couple of properties here. But the one I'm interested in is source data. Now, if I click on the ellipsis button under Source Data, the button with the th uh, three dots on it, you'll see there's two entries, on or off. If it's off, there's a zero. If it's on, there's a one. That means that this, out this button actually outputs two numbers, either a zero or a one, which is perfect for us because if it's on, that means it's going to output a one, meaning that it'll feed our trigger cell a one. If it's off, it'll feed our trigger cell a zero. So again, that's how it works. So we'll press OK there. 
because that's fine. We want to keep it like that. Now, insert in property button. This basically tells us where we want that output to go. In our case, we want that output to go in cell A1. Press OK. And we're pretty much done. I mean, uh, if we hit preview, you'll see it's on, it's off. It's on, it's off. Very nice. All you'll have to do is change the name here, and that's easy to do. We can do that with labels. Double click here. Label name. Instead of off, we'll say 2004. Instead of on, we'll say 2004 again. And press OK. So now, you'll see 2004, it's either on or off.